What happens when SpaceX's Starship booster and the ship both land successfully during the IFT Flight 4? Let's talk about it. But just recently, they conducted a test of the next IFT-5 Starship static fire test down to Starbase, Texas. And with the conclusion of this test, they'll be moving all of their test articles down the road about a mile and a half to what used to be Massey's gun range. And now it's a test facility for Starships. So what does this mean? Well, now the Starship test facility is far away from the launch facility, which is great for the launch pad and all the surrounding hardware. Because if something were to happen during a test, say if something has a rud on the test pad, shrapnel everywhere. The thing is made out of stainless steel and something could possibly happen to the plumbing or the, you know, the architecture down there at Starbase at the launch facility. So good thing they're moving it down to Massey's. Now, this is going to, you know, it might take a little bit of time to dismantle this, a few days, maybe a week to get rid of it. But they are also planning on building a second gigantic Mechazilla Tower at the launch facility. Now, there's been rumors flying around about what they're going to be using this second tower for. One of them is, it's just going to be catching the booster and the ship when they come back down to Earth. Now, the booster is going to go over the Gulf of Mexico, where it separates from the ship. And when the ship goes away, the booster will do a maneuver, come back down, fly back towards the launch area, and land on the second tower that they would be building. Tower arms open, the ship comes down, tower arms close on it, gracefully and gently sets it down. Okay, so that would be an ideal operation for the second tower and leave the first tower just for launches because that's one of the most important parts of the system. Uh, stage zero, they call it. It's the launch pad, the mechazilla arms, the whole tower. That took them years to produce. I was there for the first, uh, first section of that. I saw, I literally saw the catch arms drive down the street next to me as I was filming Starbase that day. I spent about 10 months down at Starbase and it was wonderful. I saw all the beginning stages of Mechazilla, of the tower, of ship uh, 20 and booster four. It was a wonderful time, but we can see everything changes at Starbase all the time. And they're building this gigantic star factory down there. They're building a place where they can churn out hundreds of starships per year. And if they have hundreds of starships per year, they'll have thousands of starships eventually which will send people to the moon, lower, lower Earth orbit, and also further on to Mars in the future. And they need all of this space, and they need all of this testing area so SpaceX can continue building these things as fast as possible. Elon Musk has said he wants to see this happen before he passes away, and I think the way that they're doing it now, it's totally a possibility. We're coming up on IFT4, which is wonderful, IFT3, which just happened, and it's gonna happen, the IFT4 is gonna happen in a few weeks, according to SpaceX, and the FAA has also said uh, on numerous occasions that they're working with SpaceX to get the next flight in the air as soon as possible. So we could possibly see Starship flying uh, by the beginning of June. You know, SpaceX uh, employees and representatives have said in, uh, mid, early May, something like that. But it seems like they still have a little bit to do. So we're at about the 10th right now. So it's possible they could get really ready in the next seven days. So it would be mid-May uh, before June, which it would be a great thing for SpaceX to launch this, get everything out of the way, move it on to IFT-5. The next ship has been tested. Everything looks good. But what's going to happen during IFT-4? because there's a, there's a few kind of cool things that are going to be happening during IFT4 that we should talk about a little bit. I want to know what you think in the comments down below. Um, so IFT4, the, the big thing, the big, big thing is that Elon Musk has said they're going to try to catch the booster. Now, this isn't catching, this is not flying back to Starbase. This is the booster flying to a imaginary tower in the Gulf of Mexico. 
where they will have a like a spot where they will put the booster. If it lands properly, if everything goes well during uh, phase one of this flight, where they separate the booster and the rocket in or the starship. And the booster starts coming back down towards the Gulf of Mexico. There is going to be a spot in the Gulf of Mexico where the booster can slowly hover down over the water and pretend that it's being caught by the giant Mechazilla arms. If this is the case, Elon Musk has said that for IFT-5, the next launch after IFT-4, which will be after June, probably uh, July or August, probably late July or early August, somewhere around there, if this all goes well, then during IFT-5, they're going to try to catch it at Starbase. Now, could they build a crude tower, like a very minimalistic tower, to do this in the time between IFT-4 and IFT-5? Um, they have the parts, as far as we know, to build the tower. The arms are only one part of the tower. Could they do testing, lift testing? They could lift up a booster, make sure that it um, carries the weight of a booster. Could they lower that booster down, build it back up again? Uh, there's a very slight chance that they could build that before IFT-5. And they also have to take out whatever is there right now. Um, and they have to start building. And it takes months for everything to cure on the ground. So it's not going to happen for IFT-5. I'm just saying they could put the pieces of the, of the tower together. But everything else that's on the ground, they, it's probably going to take them a long time before they actually get this thing up and running. So would they, would they chance it catching the booster with the current launch tower? I don't think so. I don't want to be a hater, but I want to know what you think down below. Like, let me know in the comments. Is it worth the risk to fly this thing back to the, the launch tower? I don't know. It, it's a really weird situation because this hasn't been done before. And if they can do it once, should they do it a few times to make sure that it works properly? I mean, if you can fly a booster wherever you want to fly a booster... I mean, they, they had to detonate the booster last time because it wasn't operational. So if they have one that works right, isn't the best idea to make, it, uh, to make sure that it works properly for like three or four times before sending it back over land where you could possibly destroy equipment and facilities and also, you know, plumbing and wiring the actual... Um, you know, the actual launch tower. I don't know. It seems like a very risky maneuver with not a great reward because it would be a one-off. You know, I think they should do a couple imaginary landings and, and more launches. I don't know. It just I'm erring on the side of caution here, and I know SpaceX doesn't really like to go as cautious as possible. But if they think they're ready, go for it, man. It seems like one of those things that... Elon Musk and the engineers at SpaceX 100% know more than what I do, but I'm just saying, like, just be cautious. I don't want to see this tower blow up. I don't want to see shrapnel everywhere. And, you know, even though the tower is clad, you know, they have protectin protection all around it, there are some things in there that aren't protected. So there's a possibility that it could get over there. There's very little fuel left when it gets over there as well. So if it does explode, there will be really no... Um, no flames other than like a, a like a burst, but that would be it. Nothing else would really catch on fire. Um, everything there is, pretty, you know, it's not flammable. It can't be because it's a rocket launch pad. So as far as we know, the only real thing that could happen is it goes completely out of control and it could crash, you know, top first or, you know, nose first into the side of a the tower or something like that. Maybe they lose control of it. I don't know. Uh, there's so many bad things that could happen to this, but there's one good thing that could happen. They could catch it perfectly, and it would be great. Now, the other thing is, um, what are they going to do with the ship? Okay, so once the booster and the ship separate, the ship is going to continue towards the Indian Ocean. It's going to orbit, and it's going to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere as hot as possible. Elon Musk has said it's going to be as hot as possible on the way back down to Earth. So if it survives that, if it survives the heat test of coming back into the atmosphere, 
and it tries to land in the Indian Ocean, if they do a soft landing with the ship too, Elon hasn't really mentioned anything about this. Um, some other people have mentioned this, uh, but the main goal here is to make it through the atmosphere unscathed or at least scathed, but also maybe land softly in the Indian Ocean if they have that opportunity. Now, if they're landing softly, what do they do with the ship when it lands? More than likely, the ship will float. There are holes in the ship, mind you, where the engines are and where some where vents happen. So could they just open up all the vents and uh, remotely open up all the vents and then let the thing sink? That's a possibility. But more than likely, it's going to float for a while. And what if those vents don't touch water? Because, you know... Uh, if it's if it sinks and it bobs a little bit, but doesn't bob enough to like start taking in water, then it's going to float there for a while. What happens then? Uh, the U.S. military and the U.S. government Department of Defense could possibly detonate the thing. Um, they um, the detonation device on the Starship booster uh, gets deactivated when it flies um, or on the booster and on the ship. Sorry. Um, gets deactivated when they're flying. So could they reactivate that when they go into the Indian Ocean? Um, there's, I don't know if that's been a thing before. I haven't really done a lot of research, so that's, you know, that's not, uh, that's not a thing that I'm aware of, but it is possible that they do that. I'm not 100% sure about that. But if you know about it, if you know about an instance that they, they use the detonation system on the ship or, or on a rocket, once it lands in an ocean, just let me know about that because I think that would be a, a, an interesting thing, a, interesting um, take on this. It's like, could they just blow it up? Because if they do, if they blow it up over the Gulf of Mexico, they could just blow it up in the Indian Ocean as well. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. I think it's a dangerous maneuver to bring it back, bring the booster back to the tower, but also what do they do with the ship when it gets into the Indian Ocean? Let it sink by itself or give it a little bit of help? I don't know. It's up to, uh, up to SpaceX and the Department of Defense if they can send out a naval uh, vessel out there with some, with some crew to do that. So uh, they may have already worked that out in, uh, for, the, you know, for the surrounding area. So I guess, I guess that's what they have going on right now. It could float for a while. Could there be pirates? You know, think about that. Could there be pirates that know where this thing lands and just grab it and just do, like, have a barge, you know, put a tow hook on it, and, you know, take it someplace else so another foreign adversary could get their hands on it and rebuild the Raptor. That's a wild one. Could they do that? Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be monitored very highly by the U.S. government. So they're going to know exactly what happens to this thing. So if that does happen, um, there's going to be a lot, of, uh, <laughs> a lot of hell to pay, so to speak, um, from, from the pirates. But that's a, that's a wild thing to think about. Could somebody just zoom up in a cargo ship, hook it, you know, hook it, and then drag it on board and take off? Or just drag it behind it? I don't know. I mean, get some of that technology for yourself. Could you, could you pirate that? I don't know. Reverse engineer it, sell it to the highest bidder? I don't know. That would be a wild thing to do, though. Anyway, this is me spitballing. I'm just thinking about stuff that, <laughs> you know, like wild movie ideas, right? So let me know down in the comments what you think about all of this. And also, if you can take a second and hit the like button and the subscribe button, because not only will you get this channel in your feed, YouTube will start recommending you other spaceflight channels that you might be interested in other than this one. And I'm happy to have you as a subscriber and part of the, uh, part of the sub club over here at uh, Space News Pod. So please take care of yourselves, everybody, and each other. And I will see you in the next episode.